Thank you, Father Coop. Thank you, Bishop Boyer. <laughs> Father Becker, Reverend Fathers, any honored guests, and my brothers. I will begin my vocation story with a flashback. In August of 2012, at the end of the summer, before I entered seminary, I found myself in a car driving towards Lansing. I was driving to Lansing specifically for my first diocesan seminarian summer gathering a week before I had to head out to St. John Vianney Seminary. I wasn't exactly looking forward to it. This would be the first time that I would consider myself officially as a seminarian. So I leaned back to my seat, sighed, shook my head and thought, well, this is it. <laughs> At least it was a good life while it lasted. <laughs> All right, now, now I'll start from the beginning. <laughs> when I was around five years old, my mom said to me, you know, Paul, you don't have to get married. You can become a priest if you want. Naturally wanting to please my mom, I said, yeah, yeah, that's what I want to do, mom. I want to become a priest. <laughs> now, in that moment, I didn't really receive any like, deep, true vocational conviction, but the priesthood was introduced as an option to me and a seed was planted. So time went on. I grew up in a good Catholic family. I'm the oldest of nine kids. I played soccer, and I was homeschooled. <laughs> so just to clarify, when, we, when people say homeschooled, they can mean a lot of different things. <laughs> <laughs> I took classes at home when I was younger, and as I grew older, I took more and more classes at homeschooling co-op. And by high school, pretty much all my classes were outside of my home. So. <laughs> So it wasn't until about seventh grade that my faith started to become my own. My parents did a good job of teaching me the faith and whatnot. But there was this group of priests called Mios Christi, and they specialized in Ignatian spiritual exercises. But um, they held boys' groups every week. And we would go, we'd visit the Blessed Sacrament in the chapel, pray for a little bit. And the priest would give a talk on the gospel for the next week. And then we'd just go play sports and eat pizza and hang out with my buddies. So that, was, that sounded really appealing to me. And uh, this was the first time in my life Two priests, Father Martin and Father Gonzalo, who ran these meetings, uh, they would always have a smile on their face. They're always happy, always joyful. And it's the first time I realized, hey, a priest could actually be extremely happy and extremely fulfilled. So that kind of made me think a little bit. And they also were from Argentina, so that means they loved soccer. So that made me trust them <laughs> a little more. <laughs> so also around the same time, I went to Pine Hills Boys Camp, which is a camp for 7th, 8th, and 9th graders, and sponsored by the Word of God community, which is charismatic. And we did lots of boy stuff during the camp, like play capture the flag with the entire camp and whatnot. There's two charismatic prayer meetings twice a day. And it was in these uh, prayer meetings that I first had a, a deeper personal encounter of God that wasn't uh, um, brought up by my parents. It was just me and on my own. And it was at that moment I realized my faith was something important that I had to attend to in my life. So throughout mid middle school and beginning of high school, you know, you hear these talks about, oh, we need more priests, or you go to somewhere on the show, Fishers of Men. And um, whenever that would happen, I would feel like this little tug, like this little kind of pull, saying, oh, I got to check this out. And I, always, I would always push that tug away. Surprise. And eventually, freshman year of high school rolls, rolls around, and girls start to become a part of my life. And I was playing soccer. So thinking about the priesthood was not really something I wanted to do at that time. And for the record, I never officially dated, and we're just going to leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> but deep down, even at, during my freshman year, I knew that the priesthood was going to be something I would have to check out. So sophomore year comes along. At this point, I'm just happy to roll along with life. I was enjoying high school. I didn't really have many cares in the world. But at this point, I heard good stuff about the seminary from other people, like, you could go there and discern. You don't have to sign on the dotted line. A lot of people went there and discerned out and were good priests, or I'm not good priests, uh, good people. <laughs> good people. And so that got me thinking, that kind of, because I, I come from a stubborn fam family, and uh, God certainly knows how to slowly reel me in. So this is uh, one way he tugged my heart. And junior year comes around, I have to start thinking about colleges, which wasn't the most enjoyable thing. And I went on a Vianney visit my junior year. And uh, let's say uh, I had a very, came in with a very cynical mindset, and I had a lot of cynical thoughts during this visit. 
So during the first holy hour, I knelt down on a kneeler, and I grimaced, and I immediately thought, there's got to be some knee doctor out there who's making bank off this place. <laughs> and then the glory bee drove me nuts, because everyone would say it really slow and bob their head, and then like look up all in unison. And I would look around, and I was like, oh my, oh my goodness, this place is real. <laughs> Looked like they're going to draft and it's like an army here or something. So that, that really scared me. <laughs> and then uh, after appeasing myself with those cynical thoughts, I immediately fell asleep. And little did I know that that was the first of many times I would fall asleep in this chapel. <laughs> So I went back home and I was like, whoa, what did I just experience? So I just kind of pushed it aside like I had been all of high school and just went on with my life. Then the summer before my senior year came, I had to start making decisions. And I went on a Steubenville Youth Conference and I heard about people who would have um, vocational calls during this time. And I was like, no, that's, that's not going to be me. And I went and the Blessed Eucharist was exposed and they started a priest started processing the Blessed Eucharist around and came closer and closer to my spot. And I had like an intimate dialogue conversation with God, although it wasn't really in words. And I knew what he wanted to talk about. And at that point, it kind of pushed me over the edge. All this pressure that had building up of whether I should join somewhere or not, I was, I was just like, okay, fine. I'll give this to you, Lord. I just, all I want you to give me is peace. And I didn't actually receive peace right in that moment, though. So I went another, on another Vianney visit my senior year, but this time I went in a bus with uh, about nine to ten other guys and uh, Father John Linden. And about four of those guys in that bus are in here, here in seminary now. And I actually enjoyed this visit. And I finally saw this place as somewhere where I could go. So that gave me some peace. Now, the summer before entering seminary. So I'm sure most of you know what it's like to have second thoughts before seminary. And boy, did I have them. I saw it as my last summer to have fun before my life ended for good. <laughs> And some people would ask me, aren't you going to seminary? I would answer, yes, but I'm not in seminary yet. <laughs> so, so my attitude was that I was just going to fix myself when I got to seminary. So of course, there was the people that would ask in slight disbelief, you're, you're going to seminary? I'd be like, yeah. So, and then everything comes to an end including my talk, will come to an end soon. And the summer came to an end, and I'm sitting here in my car, just reflecting, getting ready to be a seminarian. And, I, and there was a part of me that thought, all right, it's time to buckle down and get holy or die trying. <laughs> so I came to SJV, I moved in, I met my roommate. Eventually my mom drove off, and I walked up to my room. I looked around. I was like, wait, mom, where'd you go? And... I immediately thought of Admiral Akbar when he sees the fleet of Star Destroyers and he yells, it's a trap. <laughs> so, so God got me here. And then the first two weeks of Dunrovin uh, classes, they all flew by so fast before I knew it. Um, although, I have to say, the first whole hours were unbearable. I wanted to, like, explode and jump up and down and let out all my energy. But I was sitting in class, and I, was real, I realized academics weren't too hard yet. I, wasn't, I was enjoying myself, and I was like, wait a second. And that was when I got my peace. And I, in that moment, I knew God brought me here, and this is where God wants me to be right now. And here I am. God led me to a, pl a place, a fraternity, and a brotherhood that few people outside of these walls can't even begin to comprehend. So brothers, I'll just leave you with this verse and this thought. Whoever wishes to come after me must de deny, him my, deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. I thought I was going to lose my life when I came here, and I did in a sense. But for the little I gave to God, he has repaid me with much more than I could ever ask for and is walking with me on an adventure beyond my wildest dreams. Praise be Jesus Christ. Amen.